Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. Today we have this PV combiner box by EcoWorthy. You can check out their website at www.ecoworthy.com. I purchased this off Amazon. It was $165.18. If we go ahead and get this box open. Inside, we'll see, pretty decent packaging. It's protected on all six sides. And if we remove it, we get the combiner box. We get a instruction manual and two keys. So as you can see here in the instruction manual, we have a few various specifications. As you can see, it's rated for six strings of PV array connections. It's rated at 10 amps of current per PV string. It's rated a total of 60 amps of total PV current. Input voltage of 250 volts per string. Output voltage overall is 250 volts as well. The waterproof class is IP65, more on this later. Uh, working temperature is negative 30 to plus 70 degrees Celsius. Rated moisture, zero to 95%, and cooling methods, self-cooling. We'll touch back on this in a bit. It has a surge protective device and the dimensions in millimeters. But in inches, that comes out at 10 and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall. And the thickness on it is four and three eighths inches. Now another noteworthy feature is here on the back you have these four tabs that you can loosen the screw and spin out so that way you can uh, run a screw through top and bottom to attach this to whether it's a plywood surface or a exterior of a house. A uh, few various different options for mounting here. So in the box we got this bag with two keys to this control panel. And as you can see they put a nice um, grommet here to protect the keyhole. Uh, keep any water out and if we open this panel the first thing I notice is this door doesn't even open past 90 degrees uh, that that's actually a problem because in the code uh, National Electric Code you need a clear working space and the problem here is this door is actually interfering in the working space of this panel so it's actually uh, kind of dangerous uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I have a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm gonna pull the pins out here uh, that are holding this door in place. That way we can get clear working space in here. As you can see, they have a little C-clip and then the pins can just be pressed out. And this would be truly difficult to do every single time you wanna open this panel. The other thing I wanna mention is this gasket is only on three sides. They emitted it on the hinge side. So that IP65 rating that they're talking about is pretty much only good on three sides. I don't know how they're expecting to get away with only having a gasket on three of the sides. So the flow through this panel is we have our six input connectors here on the bottom and in blue are all of the negative lines and those run up and around to the negative bus bar and then we have one thick wire going to our main breaker and another thick wire going to our surge protective device. The positives come in below the negatives and go into these fuse holders as you can see, this is a Liket Solar GPV number ZTPV-25, and it's actually a 12 amp, 1000 volt DC fuse. It then comes out of the fuse holders into our protection diodes, which we'll get into a bit deeper here in a minute. And then those go onto the positive bus bar, where we also have two large wires, one going to the main breaker and another one going to our surge protector. So what I'm really curious about is it, what kind of wire they use to connect this panel up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove one of these wires here. And it's, it's decently tight, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull that guy out. And as you can see, it's got uh, some solder tinning on there, uh, but I can't tell if this is copper or copper clad wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away at this insulation. And it actually appears that this is uh, 
legitimate copper wire. It's not copper clad aluminum. And it's better because it has less resistance and in this application will have a amp rating closer to the actual size of the wire. In this case, it appears to be like a number 14 gauge wire, but all the writing on the insulation is in Chinese, so it's hard to tell what this truly is. So let's look into these diodes. Typically diodes have around a half volt forward voltage. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this one uh, so we can run a test and I'm gonna reinstall the screw. That way we can clamp onto it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip on these sense leads here on this diode. And as you can see in the bottom left of your screen, uh, that is the measurement of the forward voltage on this diode. Now that's how many volts you're gonna drop during use on this diode. So let's say you're pushing 10 amps through the diode, you'll have a drop of 0.46 volts. And what that equates to is a 4.6 watt uh, heat loss in this diode. You multiply that by six diodes and you have a pretty significant loss on this panel as heat. Now if we remove these clips and look at what these diodes have for heat sinking, they're only attached to the back plane of the panel with two screws. And if we look underneath, there is thermal compound here, but it's not applied very well to the back of these diodes. You can clearly see there's some areas that do not have the thermal compound applied very well. That could be a problem when you're talking about this much heat dissipation. So this is the nameplate here on the diode, and I'm gonna assume this model number MD40A1400V is showing that it's a 40 amp, 1400 volt diode. A little oversized in the case of this box in my opinion, but it should be able to handle any surges or anything like that without having issues. Now these diodes are important because what they're gonna do is they're gonna prevent any current flowing back on your solar circuits, which might be either shaded or having less sun exposed to them. So either way, coming out of these diodes, we have these nice ring terminals where the wires are soldered and heat shrunken, uh, and we go into these positive and negative bus bars. Now what I'm really curious about is what this wire is uh, going into the main breaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this guy up, and I will note these are not very tight. I mean, um, I was able to, to open that with minimal force. And if I pull the wire out, it looks like it may be a number six or a number four wire, but they did tin the ends, and that could be a problem because then these uh, lugs can't compress the wire and get a real good bite at it. Wow, actually I was able to just barely pull on the wire and it came out of this main breaker. Um, let me check and see if that tightens down and, uh, and can hold it better. So I've tightened that wire down a bit better and it, it really isn't biting very good. You could easily just wiggle it out. Uh, and if you look at the end of the wire, you can see it's not really clamped on by that breaker because of the tinning. And I, I really don't think that application is a very good place to tin the wire because it really can't compress down on the wire and get a nice firm connection. So either way, you may just wanna check your connections and make sure they're really tight. So we run these two wires into this surge protector now these, you can just grab them and wiggle them, and the modules come out. And I don't believe these are resettable. Uh, I think it's just a matter of if you trip them, you're gonna need to replace those. Now, let's talk about this main breaker. The, the only problem I see here is there really isn't much room in here to land the wires on this main breaker. If you figure you're running either a number six or a number four wire for this 60 amp rating of this panel, you really need to be able to get in there and, and maneuver it onto that breaker. And I don't feel like this is enough space here to make that happen. The other problem is there are clips on the bottom of the DIN rail to remove the breaker, but once you land the wires on the breaker, you can no longer access those clips to clip that breaker back down. So I'm not really sure how they're intending for us to land our wires on here in a safe and clean, effective manner. So at the end of the day, this panel is probably perfectly fine for a RV style application uh, and anything that's under 250 volts DC. Would I use this on my house? Probably not, especially if it's a installation that's being permitted and inspected for code compliance. Go with a name brand unit that has a trusted reputation 
that when things go wrong, there's a name brand behind it to cover any issues you might have. That being said, this is still pretty good for the price point at $165.18 on Amazon. Anyway, if you guys learned something today, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below Comment any questions you have or things I may have missed. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon so that way you get notifications when I upload new videos. Thanks guys. Have a great day. Bye.